Well, Worldfish is focused on three main research areas. The first is around building the resilience of small-scale fisheries, and that addresses livelihoods as well as the broader food systems that fisheries are part of. The second is around sustainable aquaculture, and that includes addressing climate resilience as well as other aspects of growing aquaculture in ways that reduce environmental impact and increase the gains for communities, for small producers, and for consumers. And the last one is around value chains and nutrition, making sure that the benefits from both of these sources of fish production reach those who need it most. So that includes uh, women of reproductive age, small children, as well as uh, poor communities generally, to be able to enhance the nutritional benefits and ultimately the improvement in life that comes from good nutrition. So. Sure. Yeah, climate change is, has been an important part of our agenda for, for some years. But I think uh, we've traditionally emphasized the adaptation elements and productivity. But what we're beginning to be able to pay more attention to are the opportunities for reducing emissions, especially through uh, shifts in terms of aquaculture production and shifting the um, efficiency as well as looking at ways to um, <clears throat> draw on different sources of feed, for example, to reduce the overall environmental footprint. Mm. Well, there's, there's different aspects of, reducing, of increasing these efficiencies. So one, uh, one challenge is around making sure that we've got the most uh, productive fish strains, and so it's about increasing the, um, uh, the growth rates, the ability of fish to um, convert the feed most, uh, most effectively. And the other is around improving the quality of the feed itself. And so that means, uh, for example, looking for ways to reduce the reliance on wild fish catch as an ingredient in uh, producing feed and substitute that with um, other sources. And what we're finding is that one of the most uh, valuable and innovative uh, sources for producing new feed is to use actually agricultural waste and convert that through microbial processes in a way that produces good nutrient-rich feed for fish, but doesn't have the same costs in terms of the environment. That's a longer, that's a longer term challenge, yeah. and one that requires um, partnerships with the private sector to be able to have that sort of feed production at scale and to in incorporate the right technologies. What we're doing in Cambodia is starting from the community-based approach to look at ways to not only increase fish production but in an integrated way so that alongside the rice field um, fisheries you've got not only improvements in fish but also improvements in rice field productivity itself. Okay so what I'd like to do is is put the specific rice field fisheries project in context a little bit. This is really the, the, the heart of what we're getting at. <clears throat> so, several years ago, uh, World Fish, in partnership with the uh, Cambodian government, launched a project around improving the sustainability and the productivity of rice field fisheries, and that's been supported by USAID. And this is a project that is looking to <clears throat> find ways to be able to um, look at a, a landscape approach on productivity. That means not just what's happening in the rice field, but overall, what are the gains in terms of nutrition? What are the gains in terms of income? What are the gains in terms of livelihoods that can be had from looking jointly at the natural fisheries that integrate within these rice field systems, in the canals, in the fish refuges that have been established as part of this project under Feed the Future. Fish have existed in, in these rice field systems for centuries, right? This is a natural part of the ecology. And there are certain stresses that uh, challenge the productivity of fish in these systems, along with other aquatic organisms, crabs and snails and so forth, that are integrated in, in local diets. <clears throat> so that has to do with, on the one hand, how rice is produced. So issues like uh, the use of fertilizers and pesticides that can impact upon the natural ecology, but it also has to do with how the water is managed more broadly. And so along with an increase in efforts to regulate 
the water flows, you have the risk that you can stop the connectivity of the natural flows within the ecosystems. And so you can disrupt the habitat for the productivity of, of the wild fisheries as well. So what this project tries to do is establish these community-based fish ref refuges. A community fish refuge means that there's an area that is typically already um, you know, a natural indentation that is enhanced in a way, deepened often, so that it can provide a refuge for fish throughout the seasonal cycle and particularly during the dry period. There are different ways that, that the, uh, the connectivity of the system can be broken and that's uh, about simply you know, the, the, um, the management of the water to reach the rice fields, the drying and the pumping and so forth uh, that can dry out areas that otherwise would be naturally a refuge for fish. Um, and the big picture is that there are several different stressors on these uh, rice field and fishery production systems. So you've got an increase in competition that is stemming from the need to produce more food, increased population, and other competing resource uses that are constraining the area available for both rice production as well as the wild capture fisheries. So what we're trying to do is find ways to make these systems more productive so that communities can benefit and especially the poorest community members can benefit in terms of income, nutrition, and livelihoods. <clears throat> now, this aligns well with the government policy, which is in the area of food security for Cambodia, putting a very strong emphasis on food security in terms of rice and in terms of fish. Together, these compose the most important parts of the Cambodian diet. And uh, while rice is important overall in terms of sustenance, fish is especially critical in terms of the nutritional value. And that's why for us it's so important to make sure that it's a, a key element of the diet and that it's sustained amidst these other changes in the landscape. And that it's available not only for the producers, but throughout the market linkages available for poor consumers throughout the country. Um, so the last thing I want to mention is about the opportunities for scaling this type of work. The, the first phase of this Feed the Future project was focused on 40 communities where the community fish refuges were developed. And in a second phase that's begun this year, there's an effort to expand that to some 170 uh, communities and to uh, spread that geographically to multiple provinces in a way that can more broadly support the government policy around mainstreaming this approach to enhance the productivity of rice field fisheries.